Hey, what is going on guys? Today, we're going to be going over how to build a simple beginner portfolio tracker in Google Sheets. I found Google Sheets to be by far the most effective method to track your investments, whether it be stocks, crypto, or ETFs. So in today's video, we're gonna be going step-by-step -step on how to build these type of investment trackers. And you can see here what our finished product is going to look like. You can see we're tracking a lot of really important metrics. And this is how it works. So let's say we bought Apple, We'll just type out the stock ticker here. We'll say we bought three shares at a purchase price of $160 a share. And I'll hit enter and you can see all of these metrics are going to update automatically. We have Apple's current price, our cost, the market value of our investment, our dollar gain, our growth. We can see Apple's earnings per share and a one year trend line. And if we come down here, you can see that our charts all updated automatically. So we can see our dollar gain on Apple. We can also see that Apple takes up about 10% of our current portfolio. If we come over here, we can see our portfolio as a whole, our current value, the growth of our portfolio and the dollar gain of our portfolio. So let's go ahead and jump into our beginner lesson. If you'd like to be able to download this spreadsheet or any of my other investment trackers in Google Sheets, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. Okay, so you can see we have a brand new Google Sheet open. So let's go ahead and come up here and just title this whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and put portfolio tracker and hit enter. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here to the top and I'm gonna go ahead and make a header area. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this cell here and I'm gonna drag it all the way over to cell N. And let's go ahead and pull it four down. So you can see we have this entire space selected if we come up here and click this button here, you can see we can merge these cells. If we click it, let's go ahead and come right beside it and give it outer borders right here. So you can see we now have a space for our header. So let's go ahead and title this. I'm gonna put beginner portfolio tracker and hit enter. So the next thing we wanna do is we'll select in this cell. We'll come here, let's go ahead and center this text, which you can see I did using these two right here. Let's go ahead and increase this font size as well. So let's try 36. That looks pretty good, so I think I'll keep it right about there. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and build out an area where we can show which stock we bought, the amount of shares we purchased, and what our purchase price was. So let's go ahead and type that out. We'll type out stock, we'll type out shares, and we'll go ahead and type out purchase price. And so let's go ahead and list an example. So let's go ahead and say, I bought Apple stock. We'll say I bought four shares at a purchase price of $160 per share. So now we have some example data to continue building out our chart. And the first thing we're gonna wanna see as far as data for Apple goes is I wanna know its current price. And this is gonna be the very first formula that we are gonna use. So within Google Sheets, there's an option to use a function called the Google Finance function, which you can see right here. And this is gonna allow us to pull a lot of live stock data into our spreadsheet. So let's go ahead and select it. So you can see I typed out equals Google Finance open parentheses. And what we're gonna do is we want this to be an automated spreadsheet. So we want whatever is listed right here to show the current price right here. So instead of typing out Apple right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and select this cell and hit enter. So you can see we now have Apple's current price, but because we selected this sale, let's say I bought a different stock such as Coca-Cola, I'll hit enter, and you can see the current price is gonna show up for Coca-Cola right here. So let's go ahead and switch that back to Apple now. And okay, so let's go ahead and keep moving forward now. So the next thing I wanna know is I wanna know what my total cost for this investment was. So again, we're gonna use another formula and I'm gonna do equals. And to know our current, or excuse me, our cost, I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna take the number of shares we bought and multiply that by what our purchase price was and hit enter. So you can see the total cost for our investment into Apple was $640. And beside this, I wanna know my market value. And our market value is simply gonna be what our current investment is worth. So again, we're gonna take the number of shares and it, instead of multiplying it by our purchase price, we're gonna multiply it by the current price of Apple. And I'll hit enter. So we can see our cost for this investment was $640, but the current market value is $689. And I kinda wanna see the difference between those two. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna create a dollar gain column. And beside that, we are gonna type out growth for a growth column. 
And our dollar gain is gonna be a really simple formula. We're just gonna come here, and we're gonna select our market value, and we're gonna subtract our cost out of that. And hit enter, and you can see that our dollar gain was $49.56 for this investment. For our growth, we're gonna do equals, and we're gonna take our dollar gain, and we're gonna divide that by what our original um, cost was. So let's go ahead and hit enter on that. And you can see it's gonna give it to us in a decimal format. So if we click on our growth here, we can come up here and select our percent sign to format as a percent. So we can see our investment grew 7.74%. So let's go ahead and keep moving forward. We have two more things that I wanna see. And the first one is our earnings per share. Earnings per share is a pretty important metric anytime you're looking at making an investment. So that's something I usually like to see. So again, we're gonna do equals, and just like we did for the current price, we wanna pull livestock data in. So we're gonna use our Google Finance function. So we're gonna type out equals Google Finance. And again, we're gonna come over here and select Apple. But this time I'm gonna add a comma right here and open up some quotations. And to indicate to Google Finance and Google Sheets that we want earnings per share, all we need to do is type out EPS. We'll close those quotations and close that parenthesis. And you can see right here what that formula looks like. And when I hit enter, we can now see Apple's current earnings per share. So that's a really great metric to be tracking. And there's only one more thing left that I wanna see, and that is gonna be a one year trend line. And this is gonna be just a little bit more of an advanced formula, but stick with me, I promise you can pull it off. I'm gonna take you through it step by step. If you get messed up, I'll put this link, uh, I'll put the formula in the description for our one year trend line. So, so for this formula, the first thing we're gonna do is just like any formula, we're gonna put in an equal sign. And the first thing we wanna type out is we're gonna type out spark line. And essentially what that's gonna do is it's gonna tell us we want a miniature chart within a single cell. So let's go ahead and select Sparkline. And inside of our Sparkline formula, we're gonna type out our Google Finance function. And so essentially what we need to do is we need to find the price of Apple today and the price of Apple from one year ago and create a Sparkline out of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here, we're gonna select Apple, and we'll come over here, add a comma, and in quotations, we're gonna tell Google Finance that we want Apple's price. And close those quotations, add a comma, and then we're gonna say we want the price today, open parentheses, minus 364. So that's saying we want the price from one year ago, and then add a comma, and then we want the price today. So I'll type out today again, open some quotations, and then we're gonna close off our Google Finance and our Sparkline formula. So you can see exactly what this formula looks like right here. Again, I'll put this in the description. When I hit enter, you can see we now have our one year trend line for Apple, so we can see it has been trending up. So okay, so now we have all of the metrics we need for our portfolio. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and list some more sample data in our portfolio. So let's say that I wanna buy Coca-Cola, let's say that I bought Microsoft, we'll say that I bought AT&T, and let's say that I bought Verizon stock as well. And we'll say I bought five shares of Coca-Cola, just put some random data in here at $57. Say Microsoft, I bought two shares at a price of $300. And for AT&T, we'll say I bought 25 shares at a purchase price of $27. And we'll say that I bought Verizon. Um, we'll say I bought five shares at a purchase price of $54. And so the really cool thing about this is now that we already have all of this data here, if we just go ahead and highlight this, come right here and drag this down, you can see all of these formulas are gonna automatically come down and fill in automatically. So we now have all the data that we need for our spreadsheet. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we'll come right here and we're gonna go ahead and select this data. And if we come up here to the top, I'm gonna to want to add outer borders to this right here. So you can see just like up here, we now have our outer borders. And I kinda of wanna show that this is our the top of our metrics. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this outer borders as well. And I'm gonna select this one, just kinda of, kind of spaces everything out a little bit nicer. And one other thing we can do is if we come right here and select our entire chart, we can go ahead and center the text. 
and that's just gonna make things look a little bit cleaner. So now we have all of our data, so we are ready to start building out our charts. And the first chart that I wanna see is I wanna be able to see where all of my market value is so I can visualize what my biggest investments are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, highlight all of my stocks, and we're gonna come over here and also highlight my market value. And to create a chart, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here, we're gonna click on insert, and if you come right here, you can see it gives us the option to add a chart. So let's click on this. And you can see it's automatically currently giving us a column chart, but if we come right here, it's gonna give us a lot of different options for our chart. And one of the suggested charts it's currently giving me is a pie chart, which is exactly what I want for this. So let's go ahead and change it to pie chart. And you can see, now we can see exactly what percent of our capital is in each of these investments. So Apple is about 27.9, Coca-Cola 12.3, and so forth. So let's go ahead and close out of this. And we're gonna want this chart to be about right here. So we have room for another chart. And the next chart that I wanna see is I wanna see my dollar gain for all of my investments visualized. So again, let's go ahead and highlight our stocks and we'll come over here and highlight our dollar gain as well. We'll come here and click on insert, click on chart again. And this time it is giving us a column chart and this is what we want this one to be. We wanna change this title just to say dollar gain. So we'll come up here and highlight this. We'll back out of this where it just says dollar gain. Let's go ahead and bring this over here. We'll format this just a little bit. And okay, so now we have our data and our charts. So the last thing that I wanna add is I wanna be able to see my overall portfolio outlook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and we're just gonna add a little space where we can see our overall portfolio. So I'm gonna highlight this, we'll merge these cells and I'm just gonna type out portfolio. And just like this one right here, let's go ahead and center this text. And below this, the three things that I wanna see is I wanna know my portfolio's value. I wanna know its dollar gain. And I also wanna know what its percent gain is. So for our portfolio value, this is gonna be another formula, we're gonna do equals, and this time we're gonna use a sum formula. So this is gonna add anything that we highlight is gonna be added to itself. So let's go ahead and come over here and we wanna add all of our market values together. So let's just go ahead and highlight this. We'll close off this parentheses and hit enter. And you can see what our current portfolio's value is right here. Now we wanna see our dollar gain. So again, we are gonna use this sum formula We'll come right here and highlight our dollar gain. We'll close off this parentheses and hit enter. And you can see, it looks like the investments have not turned out that well. Our dollar gain is just $4.79. Now we wanna see our percent gain. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our dollar gain and we're gonna divide this by our current cost. So what we're gonna do is we'll type out sum and we're gonna highlight our cost and close that off. And again, we have a really big decimal here. So let's go ahead and make this a percentage. And you can see our investments have only grown 0.19%, so really not very good investments, it looks like. Let's go ahead and come up here to our portfolio and reformat this a little bit. We'll give this outer borders. And let's go ahead and increase this font size a little bit as well. Let's try 18, and that looks about right. And we'll come up here and we'll highlight this and give this outer borders as well. So now we have all of our data and all of our charts. So really all that's left is to make this a little bit nicer by giving it some formatting. One of the things I always like to do with any investment tracker that I make is I wanna add some conditional formatting to any of my dollar gain or growth columns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, we're gonna highlight my dollar gain and growth. We're also gonna do the same over here on my portfolio tab. And if we come over here to format and we'll come down, you can see we have an option for conditional formatting. And essentially what we want is we want anything that is above zero to show up as green text and anything that is less than zero to show up as red text. So what we're gonna do is we'll come here and we're gonna select greater than, we want anything greater than zero. 
and we'll select our formatting and we want green text. And we can come down here and click add another rule and we'll say anything less than zero we want to show up as red text. So we'll come here and click done. You can confirm that you've done correctly right here. And when we close out of this, you can see our investments that are above zero are now showing up green. The ones that are not are now showing up as red and our portfolio is green. So this is just a really cool little formatting tip that's gonna help your portfolio stand out just a little bit more. So the next thing that I wanna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and add some color to my portfolio. And really it's kind of up to yourself with how you color this in, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna come up here and I'll select my beginner portfolio tracker. I'll also select my portfolio. I'm gonna make these the same color. We'll come up here to our coloring and I'm just gonna select this color yellow right here. I just kind of like this to stand out. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'll come up here, select all of our metrics. I'll do the same over here and we'll come over here and let's see what a light blue looks like. And I think that looks pretty decent, so I think I'll keep it that way. It's a little bit different with the way you color in charts. So to color in a chart, we're gonna actually need to select our chart and we'll click on chart style. And here it's gonna give us the option to color this in how we want. So I'm gonna try a light yellow. I tend to think that the lighter colors look better on charts to make these colors stand out more. We'll do the same for our dollar gain. And let's go ahead and try a light red. And okay, so now we pretty much have all of our chart colored in. Again, color this in how you want. One more thing I think that I wanna add is I'm gonna select my entire portfolio and I'm gonna bold this text by clicking this right here just to make everything stand out a little bit more. So now we have a finished completely functioning portfolio tracker. Let's go ahead and test it out to make sure everything is working properly. So let's say I bought, let's think of it, let's say I bought Tesla and I bought two shares at a purchase price of $850 and hit enter. And you can see all of this data has filled in automatically and our charts have updated automatically and our overall portfolio has updated automatically as well. One last thing if you want, you can highlight everything and give it a dollar sign if you want. If you come up here and click right here, you can see what that would look like. But other than that, our portfolio is completely finished. If you'd like to be able to download this portfolio tracker or any of my other investment trackers, crypto trackers, or really any of my other trackers, then you can head over to my Patreon page at the link in the description. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.